Hello and welcome to another episode of the Driving at Home podcast, where we talk about the latest sermons that have been preached here at the Cheyenne Church of Christ, and we consider some bonus takeaways and some practical action steps for you and your family to help drive those lessons home. We want these lessons to show up in our everyday lives and make a lasting impact on our faith, and that's exactly what we're here to learn how to do. So thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. What's up, you guys? Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Driving at Home podcast. This is a pretty special week for me, um, not only because I got to preach on Sunday, which is always a, a good time. I love getting to do that. But also because the set for the podcast is different this week. Uh, if you're watching the video version of this, then you you see that. Um, and I'm actually in my living, or not my living room. I'm in my dining room right now. I know what the room is called. Um, this is where we have our, all of our family meals and everything. And uh, I'm actually sitting in the spot where Emily usually sits, so don't tell her. I won't if you won't. But uh, anyway, I thought, what a special place to record an episode about love, because that was the topic I preached about, if you missed it, uh, this past week. And uh, this is where so much love in my family is expressed. This is where we have our, our meals. And, you know, to anybody else, this is an ordinary room. You know, it's a pretty small room. Most rooms in our house are pretty small compared to what you're used to, I'm sure. But, you know, it's it's just a regular old room. You know, it's a regular table, not really a regular table. I actually built this table, which means um, that's Johnny speak for we bought it from Ikea and I put it together in double the time it would have taken anybody else. But uh, nonetheless, this is just a special place to me and a great place to talk about love, which was one of the most important things, the most important thing that Jesus said we could be talking about. Jesus was once asked, what's the greatest commandment? And sure, when he was asked the question, there was some motive behind the question that was less than pure, but Jesus answered the question, which is great news for us because how many times do we catch ourselves thinking, Lord, what's the most, like, what do you want me to do? Lord, what's your purpose for my life? What's your plan? What do you want me to focus on? What can I be doing that would please you? You know, how do we please God? Like we ask ourselves these kinds of questions and Jesus was actually asked that question and he answered it in a really simple way to understand. And the way he answered the question was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so this is what Jesus said is most important to him. But here's the crazy part. Oftentimes we get so focused on things other than those two things, things that are less important. And we spend all of our time talking about things not that, that aren't necessarily bad or evil or wrong, but just aren't the most important things. And so it's not bad to talk about some of these other doctrines or things that we believe or the, even the other things that scripture talks about. But my point in, in the lesson on Sunday was let's be careful about moving on to those other things if we haven't really paid very close attention to living out what Jesus said was the most important thing. You know, I, I said it was like if you were living at home with your parents and your parents were gonna go away for a day on a Saturday, you know, and they said, okay, while we're gone, the most important thing we want you to do, the most important thing we want you to do is clean your room. And then the second most important thing we want you to focus on if you get the room done is to mow the lawn, right? And so that's what they wanted you to do. And then they go away and you spend all your time, you know, cleaning other parts of the house. Maybe you straighten up the living room and you vacuum the house and you dust the shelves and you clean the kitchen and you, you know, clean the baseboards, whatever. But then you never actually finish cleaning your room and you never even touch the lawnmower and they get home and, and you're so proud to show them all the things that you got right. You know, all the things that you had done in the house, but they asked you, but did you do what we said was most important? And if you hadn't done that, then even if you had done lots of other good things, don't you know that they would be a little disappointed when they had been so clear, but this is what we said was most important to us and you decided to focus on other things, not bad things, just other things, and they'd be so disappointed. And we do the same thing with God and Jesus. When, when Jesus was so clear, the greatest thing is to love God with everything you've got. And the next greatest thing is to love the people around you. Love the people around you. And the, so those are the most important things to Jesus. And we need to make sure that we're keeping first things first, right? We need to make sure we've got the toaster plugged in before we try to cook the bread. 
And so uh, that's really what we talked about in the sermon on Sunday. I think it's so easy to get focused on other things. And um, there was one story I wanted to tell that I just uh, couldn't make time for in the lesson, so I figured I'd share it here. Because I think a lot of the time, what we get hung up on in actually living out the command to love our neighbor rather than just agreeing with it um, is just we make it a bigger deal than it is. Like we overcomplicate it. That's something that we're really good at doing. And in the sermon, I use the example of changing a diaper. You know, we overcomplicate that process. But uh, as a new parent, anyway. But there's also, um, I remember when I was 10 years old, and I, there was a news feature, like a, a news story that was done on the evening news about me. And it was really awesome. Uh, they came out and they filmed me playing a football game. I was a pretty good football player. And uh, they filmed they filmed us, part of the game, and they showed like this awesome highlight reel of me running all over the field and juking people out, scoring touchdowns. And they showed it on the evening news. And I was like, oh my gosh, finally, the world is like recognizing my athletic prowess and they're giving me the recognition that I, you know, thought I deserved for my athletic ability. And I just made a huge deal out of it. And I remember even being nervous going to school the next Monday because I thought everybody's going to want to talk to me and be like, how do, like, what's it like being famous now? And, um, it was just, I totally over blew what actually happened because here's what actually happened. The news was doing some kind of story on the Pop Warner Football League for the city, and they just happened to go shoot part of the game that my team was scheduled to play. Like, it was totally a fluke that my team happened to be scheduled at the same time they were going to have their news crew out there. And so they happened to show like a two second clip of me running in for a touchdown. But in, and so that's what actually happened. That's what was actually on the news. It was not about me. I, they might have mentioned my name. I don't know. But um, that's what actually happened. But in my mind, I blew it way out of proportion because I'm just really good at complicating things that are simple and making a bigger deal out of things that aren't that big of a deal. And so just like we make a big deal about, um, or just like I made a big deal about this news thing, we make a big deal about loving our neighbor and we think it's something so much bigger than it needs to be. We think that loving our neighbor means we have to go on some mission trip or we have to have matching t-shirts with everybody from church or we gotta volunteer for some ministry program. It's like, no, dude, you could love your neighbor on a Tuesday, on just a random Thursday or something. Like you could just go and be a friend to them and take their trash cans out and then pull them back in after the garbage truck comes or strike up a conversation or mow their lawn for them. Or there's a million things you can do or just talk to them and be engaged and listen and be present with them. We often make it a bigger deal than it really is. Um, but I wanna encourage you, if you don't know who your neighbors are, get out there and know your neighbors. Uh, like I said in the sermon on Sunday, if you don't love the people that God has already put close to you, then you're, it's, it's not likely that you're gonna be very good at loving the people who are far from you. Like, love the people who are near you. That's what Jesus said. So what if we started by actually taking him at his word, by taking him literally, by not always treating Jesus like he was talking in some metaphor? Because when he wasn't talking in a parable, he was just saying what he actually thought. And what his actual thought on this, the most important thing that we could be doing, is love God with all you've got. And what that looks like is loving the people near you. So start with the people near you. Love people within a 30 foot radius of you and love your families and love the people that live close to you. Know their names, serve them, go out of your way um, just to be a friend to them. You know, loving your neighbor doesn't mean you have to be best friends with everybody, but it doesn't mean you need to be a friend to everybody. And oftentimes we avoid people because either we think they're difficult, we assume they're difficult, or it's because we know them to some level and they actually are difficult. It's like, yeah, but you know what? Those are the people that we need to engage. Those are the people we need to focus on showing love to because Jesus said, if we only love the people that are easy to love, how are we any different from the people in the world? So love the people that are difficult to love and don't make them earn, have to earn your love uh, because you didn't earn Jesus's love. You didn't earn God's forgiveness. And so we shouldn't extend a standard and project a standard onto other people that we don't want God projecting onto us. And so that's just my encouragement to you guys for this week is don't make loving our neighbor a bigger deal than it really is. Like it's a, it's an important thing. 
Jesus said it's the most important thing, but that doesn't mean we have to overcomplicate it. Just go be a friend to somebody. We know how to be friends with people because we have friends. We have people, and what, what do you do with the people who are your friends? You talk to them, you engage with them, you care about the things they care about, you encourage them, you speak truth to them, you know, you do things for them, you go out of your, you think about them, you pray about them. Like, do those things for people in your life who are difficult. And if you have people that you need to reconcile with, take the first step. Take the first step in, in that rec- reconciliation process shoot them a text, write them a letter, whatever. Just say, sorry, apologize. If you're in the wrong, apologize. And, uh, and don't say, sorry, you know, you're horrible or sorry, you misunderstood. Just have a genuine apology and mean it. Um, because if, if we're trying to show love and we have an ounce of insincerity in our hearts, people can smell that from a mile away and they just want no part of it. There's nothing, uh, that yells Jesus about insincere love. It's if it's insincere, then it's not love at all. So that's my encouragement to you. Love the people who are near to you. Get out there, love your neighbors. If you don't know them, get to know them. Just make up a reason to go over there, you know? Pretend you need to borrow a cup of sugar or something, or if you're really healthy, go borrow some almond butter or whatever. Uh, You know, just really get out there. Don't assume that you have to wait for an invitation. You are invited to love your neighbor. Jesus already extended the invitation to you. You just need to accept it. So get out there and love people. Go love somebody right now and talk about it with your family. Go over the PDF for this episode and ask yourselves these questions and talk about why is it hard to love people? You know, what are some things we can do to show love to our actual neighbors? What can we do? Talk about ideas. Think outside the box. You know, don't, don't be ordinary. Really show them the love of Jesus and uh, it'll go a long way. So thanks for tuning into this episode. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next week here on the Driving at Home podcast.